Uh, he's dropped back a little bit. I think he's going to sit behind Gaviria, make sure that he has somebody behind him. That's the thing you need. You need to constantly communicate, and it looks like Philippe Gilbert is going to look after Gaviria on this climb. So who's it going to be? We're 10 kilometers from the finish of the 108th Milano San Remo. Trek Segafredo will take it up at the front. Such a fight to take the control of the peloton going into the Poggio. This is Conde Court on the front. A lead out rider Fellini is on his wheel. Then Jordan Degenkolb in third wheel. Just behind Degenkolb is Jesper Stoyven. So Trek Segafredo really starting to light things up now. And then you have six riders from Team Sky being led, I think it is, by Ian Stanard and Luke Rowe. And at the back... Elia Viviani sitting, waiting, skin suited up and ready to have a go at a race. Well, he's been second on five occasions in races this year. The Olympic Omnium track champion on the track, pardon me. What a way to pick up a first victory of the season this would be for him. There's Gilbert drifting a little further back. Bonin doing the same as well. We're approaching the bottom of the Poggio now. Here we go, the last big challenge. Poggio time in Milano San Remo. Oh, they're on the podio, and it's Luke Rowe of Wales who takes things up at the front. Ian Stannard is also there. I think it's Danny Van Poppel in the mix as well. So Team Sky on the front, Michal Kwiatkowski in second wheel. And Tom Dumoulin fighting them for that position as well, remember? Michael Matthews must be feeling a million dollars today with the pace that they set on the last climb. He's still in this group. They've done the business of shedding the likes of Mark Cavendish out of the way. But remember, Buani is still here. We've still got Degenkorp, Demar. There's a handful of sprinters who could pose problems. Gaviria as well. This is the official beginning of the Poggio then. The Poggio, the final difficulty, 3.7 kilometers, 3.7% average, a maximum though of 8%. This is the symbol of San well, look at this. Tom de Moulin is intent on trying to tear this race to pieces. Van Poppel looking pretty serene on his wheel. Actually, Michal Kwiatkowski just looks around. The other rider from Team Sky there is the prodigiously talented, talented Gianni Moscon of Italy. Peter Sagan on, ominously sat on the back of the Team Sky train. This they is fantastic stuff. They cannot shed Peter Sagan at the minute. Remember, he's looking to become the first man to win this in the rainbow jersey since Beppe Saroni in 1983. It's been a long, long time since we had the world champion winning Milano San Remo. And look at this from Dumoulin. He loves racing in Italy. Remember, he was in the pink jersey last year at the Giro d'Italia. He's setting a fearsome pace, but he can't get rid of anybody here yet. It's interesting that Van Poppel is riding just a length off his wheel all the way up this climb. Saves so much energy if he got back on his wheel, but it could be that he just could not hold the wheel. Finally, he makes contact. And look at this long, long line of riders. People trying to fight to stay in position. Great display of power here by the Dutch rider. And Gavidia is doing a great job. He's there in about 10th position as Cummings looks to move up on the right-hand side. Prompt for 187, who is Primoz Roglic there? Always, I think, put in the team to do a job for his teammates. Cesare Benedetti of Bora Hansgrohe dropped as well. He's done his job today. It's all down to the main men when he gets to the top here. And we will see who gets to the top of the podge, or crucially, who gets to the bottom, because we've got a very short distance from the bottom to the finish line to get organized. We certainly have just over two and a half K, well, it's approximately two K. Round this corner now. <laughs> Again, the group slowly but surely thinning out. Look at the acceleration of Tom de Moulin. Again, takes a couple of lengths out of Van Poppel. Looks around, looks a little bit frustrated that his fellow countryman cannot hold his wheel. Buani's still in here as well. He's looking brilliant, the man who won the no-good, of course, uh, uh, in the midweek. Degen Kolb is also there. He sat on the wheel of uh, Fellini. Of course, Degen Kolb knows how to ra ride this race. Looking really, very, very comfortable at the moment. 7.4 kilometers to go. Halfway up the Poggio. Tom Dumoulin making the race on the Poggio. If you're just joining us, Mark Cavendish was dropped on the Cipressa. But a whole host of big names are still here. Degen Korb in the top 10 riders on the road. Also, there is Elia Viviani. Look at him in fifth place, looking fairly comfortable for Sky at the moment, who are, by the way, being led by Danny from Poppel. There's Degen Korb in the red and black. Gavidia in the blue and white. Belgian champion Gilbert looking after him. Nasser Buani is in the red and staying there. I think we still have Christoph towards the back. I know that people Pozzato is still in this group, and we've had seven hours of racing. I think you also spotted uh, Court Nelson in the group as well. The Danish rider 
the sprinter for Orica. This is where there's a little bit of a plateau, but they still have the steepest section of the climb to come. Still, Tom de Moulin driving hard on the front, but in a moment, Rob, this is when it kicks up to 8%. Well, that's when we might see somebody crack. At the minute, everybody's still there. Greg Van Avermaet as well, who we'd expect him still to be here. Van Holobato, dangerous sprinter from Spain. He's wearing the yellow and black of Team Lotta and El Yombo, the Dutch team this year. And crucially, the reason why Tom Dumoulin is doing this work is Michael Matthews, their Australian sprinter, is behind looking to get what will be his first win for his brand new team, Sunweb. And he's done. That's it for Tom Dumoulin. Done for the day, and it's up to Sky. Who else can try and make it more difficult? Because at the minute, somebody has to make it difficult because... Viviani's in the perfect position. Well, tell another rider that's there, just sat on the wheel of the world champion and race favorite Pete Sagan. Sonny Cobrelli is also there at Battery in Merida. So another fine sprinter. And looks like there's an attack on the right oh, it's side. Sagan. It's Sagan. It's Sagan to go on the attack. Peter Sagan, the world champion. Well, he's trying to drop the sprinters on his own. And if anything's going to split it, this will. Sagan to go for Borna Hansgrohe. And if he's going to win it, he's going to win it in style. The, what an absolutely devastating turn of speed by the world champion. You blew Cobrelli off his will. It's Mihal Kwiatkowski trying Philippe. to go across now. Fantastic going stuff. going with him. It's Sagan going, dropping half the sprinters that remained. Kwiatkowski's chasing. Ana Philippe is there as well. This has really thrown the cat among the pigeons. This is absolutely bike racing at his best. Here can he hold clear. That was a devastating turn of speed. Alaphilippe still hasn't got into contact. Kwiatkowski also distance now. Well, Peter Sagan, who won his first monument last year at the Ronde van Vlaanderen, the 100th Ronde van Vlaanderen, he's here at the 108th Milan San Remo. He said this is the easiest race to ride, but maybe the hardest one to win. We talked about it earlier. He's often accused of doing too much, but what he's doing here... It's fantastic. Absolutely amazing. But look at the leg speed as well. He's pedalling up this climb. He's not grinding up the climb, Rob. He's pedalling up this climb with quite devastating finesse, leaving BMC and Greg van Avermaet to chase. The race is now going away from the Olympic champion. They're on to the descent. Off the podio he goes. Peter Sagan taking with him Julien Alaphilippe and Michal Kwiatkowski. Well, they opened up a big gap there. That's about five or six seconds, to say the least. And we know how we know the kind of bike handler that Peter Sagan is. Will it's, Alaphilippe hold him on this descent? It's all about getting to the bottom and staying in the right position. Remember, Sagan was perfectly placed 12 months ago when he was caught up in a crash. This time, he doesn't want, A, the competition from the sprinters, B, the tight legs around him and the mistakes. And I think the interesting thing is, will the other two riders combine? Will Julian Alaphilippe be told with five kilometers to go, you do not work with Peter Sagan, you've got Gaviria behind. Will Kwiatkowski uh, co collaborate in this break as well? It's left to Cobrelli, I think, to try and shut things well, down. That's the thing, who does the chasing here? Cobrelli, anybody who does do the chasing, well, they're messing their own sprint up for the end. Indeed, you've got this elite group of riders now. They're going to have to commit a little bit on the descent because this group, we haven't got a time check just yet, but I'd estimate it's around five to seven seconds at the moment. And still, it's Peter Sagan, the world road champion, on the front. Have we ever seen anybody like Peter Sagan since maybe Eddie Merckx? I think the closest thing we've seen to, to Peter Sagan in recent years is Mariano Foss, isn't it? Yeah, it, I think he's, he's just, it's just raw talent. It's just passion for the sport. Unpredictable. Just absolutely wonderful. I mean, every race that he rides, he tries. He wears his heart on his sleeve. He's been protected well by his team. But that was a mightily ferocious attack. Cobrelli literally just could not do anything, couldn't hold his wheel. Well, no time gaps at the minute. Buaro has appeared at the front to ride for Cobrelli, at least. That's good news for Bahrain Merida and the rest of those chasing on. In the meantime, four kilometers remain. And remember, it is a tough, tight, technical descent for Peter Sagan. Of course, nobody here is going to ride with this man. Well, four k's to go now. Still Kwiatkowski, the winner of Strada Bianca himself, a former world road champion, remember? Real nice low center of gravity, but all these three riders quite were relatively diminutive apart from Peter Sagan taking those corners very well. Thankfully, it's dry here today. Still nobody helping. Assists a Sagan on the front. Sagan, before today's race, said adversaries know me much better than they did three years ago. Now we race in a different way. I'll stop with the will to win and I'm ready to adapt to my situation on the road. And just as it slowed up there when Dumoulin was done, it was becoming too easy for Viviani and the rest of the sprinters. 11 seconds now for Sagan's attack. Is that enough? I think it's enough, but it, it is enough because I don't think there's enough cohesion behind. But the interesting thing will be, will 
Alaphilippe combine forces with Kwiatkowski because Alaphilippe himself has a pretty good sprint. Kwiatkowski in the past has beaten Peter Sagan in a one-on-one -on -one sprint. We saw that in the GP E3 last year. All of these riders in front have a reasonable kick, but will Peter Sagan play it cool and actually usher the other riders through? Sagan, who has finished second here once in the weather-affected Sam Remo that was won by Gerald Seolik in 2013. Peter Sagan knows how to ride this race. 12th last year, 4th in 2015, 10th in 2014, 2nd, as you said, in 2013, then 4th in 2012. He dearly loved to add this to El Palmares, oh, of course. Oh, the gap's growing, Matt. The gap is growing. Oh, Alaphilippe started to ride with them. Alaphilippe riding with them. Now, that is surprising. That's very, very surprising. But maybe out, we've seen Alaphilippe uh, do this before. He's got a good... Oh, bit of a flick there. This is a little bit of brinkmanship. They're coming into the last 2,500 metres here. It's so crucial that they keep pressing on. Well, normally, on paper, you would say Sagan to beat these two comfortably in a sprint, but this isn't any ordinary race. 291 kilometres. The distance can do funny things to the body as they are off the descent of the Poggio into the town of San Remo. Now the approach to Villaroma and the finish begins. Frantically, they chase behind. BMC trying to get on for Greg van Avermaet. We have Bahrain there for Sonny Colbrelli. Quick step, if it does come back together, doesn't really matter because they've got Davidia is still in here as well. Well, and now this, this is your answer, Rob. Michal Kwiatkowski is helping with the pacemaking. All of these three riders, if they continue, will end up on the podium. But who will be the winner? How much energy has Peter Sagan spent with that attack on the climb of the Poggio? Julian Alaphilippe now sits in. Has he been told that he now must sit on? We know the explosive Frenchman is very, very fast at the finish. Sagan just radios in for the final time, I think, because he comes with 1.5 kilometers to go. Trek Segafredo joined the chase because Degenkorb is there. Kwiatkowski starts to commit to the move as well really really interesting to see how it goes Alaphilippe has definitely been told to sit on. His uh, director sportive, David Bramati, will be acutely aware of this situation. You cannot afford to tow Sagan to the line. 15 seconds now. Well, the current world champion, a former world champion, the recent revelation from Paris-Nice. It's Sagan, Kwiatkowski and Alaphilippe as we come into the final kilometre of the 108th Milano San Remo. 18 seconds, I feel it's a little less as we come up towards the finish. This can still end in tears. At the moment, it is favourite odds on Peter Sagan, but he's in the worst possible position at the front here. Alaphilippe warms up. They come on to Villaroma in just a moment's time, and Sagan, well, it surely is his, unless there's a mistake. Unless there's a mistake. Well, they round that corner successfully. Peter Sagan, Rob, is going to have to lead himself out to try and win his second monument. Can he do it? Well, he's going to have to ride the other two off his wheel. Remember, no World Championship winner here since Pepe Saroni in 1983. 500 metres to go. This is the spot last year, exactly where Sagan was caught up in the crash. It didn't happen then for Gaviria. It did happen for Demar. They're all chasing on behind to bring it back together, but it's not going to happen. 350 metres now to go. As Kwiatkowski looks around, Alaphilippe's going to have to launch his sprint soon. 200 to go. It's Sagan on the front. He was victorious in Kuhn of Russell Kuhn. He's putting up the gap, but closing on him is Kwiatkowski. Oh, surely he can't do it, can he? Kwiatkowski's coming round. Sagan's going to be beaten. It's Kwiatkowski who's going to do it. Michal Kwiatkowski wins Milano San Remo for Sky. Sagan at the front all the way, and Cuiato does it. Well, what an absolutely thrilling finale. They nearly came together in the final there, but it was the Polish rider who adds Strada Bianca to his, to, adds this win to his winning Strada Bianca. What an absolutely remarkable finale. What a thrilling edition of Milan San Remo, and what a worthy winner. Oh, Michal Kwiatkowski, world road champion in Spain. Michal Kwiatkowski wins a monument here. Sky, who had six men coming into the pocho at the end. It was they who chased down quickly, who rode to close the gap along.